Hey, my name is Lizzie. This is my Lolita wardrobe. And today I'm just gonna introduce myself. Um, talk about how I got into Lolita fashion, what my goal is with this channel, and why the title of this video, uh... But I have been wearing Lolita since about 2015, 16? I'd have to actually look specifically. But I've been following Lolita since the early mid 2000s. It started with a off chance, a friend from high school who I met up with in college, invited me to go to a meetup, which included her and two other people wearing Lolita and me in jeans and a t-shirt. And they were so nice. They showed me gothic Lolita Bibles. Um, they introduced me to specific brands because I, I knew what Lolita was, the dress shape and the general aesthetic but I didn't know anything about the fashion brands or any of the necessarily strict rules that apply to the fashion. But they really started my education and my interest. And for years, I would look at the brand websites occasionally, look at their beautiful dresses, because I really liked the classic Lolita aesthetic. I really liked muted colors, because I was an anthropology major, and I was really interested in ancient history. And I just really liked the historical aesthetic of Lolita fashion. Those of you that are attentive and are looking at the dresses behind me will realize that changed a little bit. <laughs> So I moved to Michigan, where I live now, from Iowa in 2014, I think. And I came up here with my now ex-partner, and I came up here for grad school. I was going to get my master's in history, which I did not, but that is a story for another time. We had a bit of a rocky relationship pretty much the whole time we were together. Um, I was really trying to be healthier. I was in my mid approaching late 20s and I didn't want to be overweight my whole life. I had sort of started dealing with um, issues that had developed as a child as an adult because I now have the power to do something about it myself. I hadn't really come to terms with some things in my past. I just felt really crummy about myself. A consistent thing in my life is that I don't like pictures. I don't like my face being in places. I'll frequently take a Facebook picture and use it for months and it won't even really look like me anymore because I hate taking pictures of myself. And even just filming this is a huge step for me. I'm looking at my face on camera and I don't feel mortified for the first time in a really long time. I feel a lot more comfortable than I thought I was going to. It's kind of nice, actually. But I moved up here to Michigan to go to school. For the first year and a half, I was doing okay, but my partner, could not hold a job and he had his own mental health problems that he kept promising me he would deal with he would get help he would get therapy um but he never did and he would get after me when i would forget to take my medication because i was too hard to deal with but i had to deal with him unmedicated literally 24 7. eventually after he lost his job well he was working for a temp agency so he didn't lose his job his his uh assignment had ended earlier than expected and he did not get hired on permanently like he had anticipated and I had already supported him for several months working part-time on my student loans while going to grad school and I would come home and he would have been playing PlayStation all day he wouldn't have done any of the things that I had asked him to do that day and I was just getting really frustrated it just sort of was a drain and I was dealing with my own mental health problems and my own issues so I finally told him that he needed to pack up his stuff and he needed to go back to Iowa because I did not want him with me anymore. I did not want to be in a relationship. I didn't want him living with me anymore. And I lived on my own in that apartment for a couple months. And when I finally moved to a new place, I was still kind of coming to terms with the fact that I now knew no one. Um, I am a social reckless. I have a really hard time leaving my apartment, but I, sort of had this renewed interest in Melita fashion. And so I hopped on YouTube, and I don't even remember what I originally searched for, but I started finding the Deerstalker videos, um, what is Melita, mean Melitas, you know, all the videos that probably most of you have already seen. And I came across a channel and a YouTuber named Lovely Lore. And she is an amazing person. I met her in person earlier this year, 
at an event in Kansas City, Missouri called Paradiso, which happened over my 29th birthday. And I went with a number of my friends. I will probably do a whole video on Paradiso. And we're going again in 2019. So if I'm, you know, still going at this, then I will probably film there. But she was a major inspiration for me to finally find a local community up here in Michigan and just jump into it and try it and get over this whole oh I forgot um part of the reason I was really struggling with my own self-image at that point was that before my ex took off he uh, admitted to me that he had been consciously sort of thwarting my efforts to get healthier and to try to get uh, lose weight and feel better about myself because he was afraid that I would lose weight and get more attractive and leave him. But he didn't want me to work on myself. And so I was really struggling with that and feeling like trash. And Lore, she just has a general message of you should do what makes you happy. And I was like, yeah, I should do what makes me happy. I shouldn't care about what other people think of me or what other people say or if I'm conventionally attractive. And the process of finding the community up here was a little bit of an adventure. I knew back when I was talking with my friend in early 2000 at that meet that pretty much everything was on the live journal at that point. I think I found like this database on live journal that like listed communities by state and I found the Michigan page and it took me to a defunct live journal and it said, we are now on Facebook. So I messaged the moderators and you know, they had a little quiz like most related communities do. Got in and I started talking to people and meeting them. My very first meet, I honestly looked terrible. I didn't own any Lolita at the time. And so I just kind of wung it with what I had. And I drove over to Grand Rapids, which is an hour and a half away from me to uh, meet somebody who's become a really great friend of mine. She's in my hashtag squad, which consists of me, her, one other person, so there's three of us. And that was my first meet. And it was just me and her at an orchard. And we just hung out, we got to know each other. She was actually wearing Lolita and I was not. So it, you know, it was fun. Then I ended up meeting the other member of my squad at a meet later in the year that was on the other side of the state in Detroit. Made a skirt that isn't terrible but isn't great either. But so I had put together an outfit that was a mixture of things that I already owned that were, you know, kind of acceptable and a skirt that I had made. And that's where I met the other member of my squad. And it was great, it was a really good time. And these two girls have become a huge pillar of strength for me in times I didn't think I was gonna be able to get through. But then, um, several months, I eventually bought my first dress, which was Angela Pretty. But honestly, a thing I never thought was going to happen. I looked at Angela Pretty's aesthetic in the mid, early 2000s, which most people refer to now as the golden age. I call it the marshmallow age. The marshmallow aesthetic is really good on people that can pull it off. I have tons of friends that wear super sweet OTT early 2000s AP Lolita and they look great and I love them. I just don't feel comfortable dressing like that. I mean, I, I would be willing to try it sometime, but I, I don't think it's my thing. And I discovered chocolate print. And chocolate prints have become my new favorite thing. I have a couple blue dresses and a couple of oddballs, but for the most part, I'm in the chocolate and mint color scheme here. So I bought my first dress from Closet Child. I was so proud of myself. And it was quartet chocolate in pink. If you're new in Lolita, you will go through a period of discovery about yourself until you really find what your aesthetic is going to be. Mint chocolate was not what I went in to Lolita thinking I was going to wear, but it is definitely, definitely me and I love it and I don't regret it. I have since replaced that dress with the mint version. That's good. <laughs> but so I bought my first dress and I continued to engage in my community up here in Michigan. Went to meets, built up my knowledge, did research, 
and here I am now. And um, I'm not wearing Lolita right now because the unfortunate reality is that many of the dresses behind me, in fact most of them, don't fit me anymore. It's something that I've been struggling with um, and that brings me to the title of this particular video. Diaries of a Fatty Cham part one. Or chapter one? I don't know. I haven't decided how I'm gonna handle the numbering and naming of this. But I am overweight. At this moment in my life, I am the heaviest I've ever been in my adult existence. It's horrible and awful, and I'm tired of it. I wanna take this phrase or this title that is frequently used to demean people like me and shame us and make us feel terrible about ourselves. Calling me names isn't gonna stop me or make me go away. And maybe it makes you feel better about yourself, but maybe you shouldn't be so judgmental of people that are different than you. On this channel, I wanna tackle tough subjects that aren't necessarily unique to the Lolita community. There are things that people in the Lolita community struggle with and I don't want them to think that they're alone or feel like there's no one they can talk to. Obviously, I'm not an expert, I'm not a doctor, but I'm always willing to listen and be an ear for people. And go watch Lore. Um, she's doing a video series that is Obstacles to Lolita and she's tackled some pretty tough stuff, but she's a really positive person. Um, having met her, she's this incredibly, incredibly genuine person and a massive force for good in this community. She's definitely been a major impact on my life. Ooh. I'm doing the, the teary weepy thing. She's definitely been a positive impact on my life and is part of why I'm still here and why I have friends that have been a very positive thing in my life as well. So I want to be able to wear these again. Um, I have plans for Paradiso with a really great friend and I don't want to let her down and I don't want to let myself down any more than I already have. I want to put positivity out there. I don't necessarily care about being popular and I'm not somebody that is searching for e-fame. Honestly, I prefer to fade into the background and have no one see me. But. If I can bring something positive to the community, maybe I can be for somebody what Lore was for me. If I can affect one person, that's enough for me. I'm Lizzie. This has been a video. But if you made it this far and you're not one of my friends, then I hope that you can subscribe. Hopefully, you'll find something here that will help you out through something that maybe you're struggling with. Confidence issues, believe me, I know all about that for now. I guess. Bye.